Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, Joe here to um, discuss the playoffs from yesterday, which was Friday the 26th. A um, little pressured for time here. I do have um, the Islanders game on right there. It is about, or it just ended. The period, third period just ended. It's going to overtime. So if you see you react to some crap, that's what it is. We are really pressed for time here today. So. Let's get into it. Let's talk about the Bucks and the Pacers game. Let's talk about the Bucks. What, what a way to start this. 5.30 game, and we could not have asked for a better 5.30 game. I really don't think we could have. Um, Lillard, at the very beginning of the game, that looked so bad. That injury looked so bad. Like, people comparing to, like, Derrick Rose and shit, and he just comes back at the start of the second. So... Um, since then, we've learned that it's um, an Achilles sprain, I think, and he's unlikely for game four, but he played through that the whole game. was um, I'm not sure how many... Um, he had 28 points on a sprain to ki like that's going to keep him out of a playoff game. That's incredible. Lillard went off. You got to feel bad for him that they didn't end up pulling this W out, but... Let's talk a little bit more about Lillard. Um, after his injury scare, he looked really bad. He only had nine points in the first half, and most of those, if not all of them, came before the injury, I'm pretty sure. And then in the third quarter, he woke back up and doubled that in the third quarter, and he had 18 total in the game. And then, obviously, fourth quarter plus overtime, he had 10 by basic addition. So he had a great second half, which is, you know, when he was probably hurting the most because he was hobbling on it so much. Um, and yeah, the Pacers, the Pacers really took control of this game, especially even a little before Lillard left, but especially when he left, they led by, I think, as, as much as damn near 20, and, uh, the Bucks went on a crazy run at the, uh, end of the third, and Middleton hit this, like, jump shot to cut it down to, um, seven, a seven-point lead at the end of the third, um, and then Lillard in the fourth hit two straight threes to take the lead 92 to 91. So the Bucks were just going electric avenger. Pacers controlled the entire middle, beginning and middle of the game. And then after the end, like toward the end of the third, they just decided enough is enough. Um, let's talk. Um, this is really out of order. Oh my God. Um, let's talk about Halliburton. Halliburton, um, did he have a triple double? I think he did. I don't have his stats here. Where the hell are... Yeah, okay, there it is. How, he was everywhere this game. Halliburton, this is what we wanted to see from Halliburton. Um, 10 rebounds, 16 assists, and 18 points. And these are nice assists. These are these are nice assists. A lot of them went to Miles Turner, who ended up having 29 points. Um, so the Pacers, Halliburton finally did what we expected him to do. He hasn't been playing terribly, but not to his caliber. This was definitely his caliber. There was one... Um, at the end of the game, the end of the game to go to overtime. Or actually, I'm sorry, I'm thinking in overtime. To go to overtime, it was a Middleton buzzer beater at the um. Well, not buzzer beater, but like 1.2 left on the clock when he was done with it. Um, from the three, highly contested. I have no idea how he landed that shot. Middleton, I don't think he's had a game this good since I've been watching freaking basketball. I heard this guy's name. Obviously, he's had some good games, but this was just absolutely insane. He was going off. Um, and obviously, like I said, Lillard at 28 points too, so this goes to show how well the uh, Pacers came together to pull this one out. Um, what are you going to say? Um, so, overall in the game, we're obviously going to talk about overtime in a second. Um, the Pacers had more, eight more offensive rebounds than the Bucks, um, and like I said, the Pacers led by damn near 20, and the Bucks came back. So, it was a pretty even game other than those um, offensive rebounds, which clearly, clearly made a difference. Um... So, let's talk about overtime real quick. Overtime was just Lillard, Halliburton, and surprisingly enough, Aaron Neesmith, um, former Celtic, obviously Celtics fan. Um, his player development has been terrific. He was, like, in a position where he was, like, barely coming off the bench, you know, kind of like a Luke Cornette guy for, for us currently. And he's developed into someone that they can really rely on and, and, and trust. Because it was his three that gave the Pacers a three-point lead with 14 to go in overtime. And then, um, unfortunately for him, the, uh, obviously, I, I still give him love for that shot. Unfortunately for him, though, it accounted for nothing because Middleton answered it with six to go. So tie game with six seconds in overtime. I forget who was passing it in, but he passed it all the way to the backcourt. 
um, where Halliburton was waiting. And I was like, nah, now you got to run all that way. What are you doing? Halliburton takes it up. Jukes with six seconds to go, remind you. Um, jukes out Beverly and then hits a jump shot over Andre Jackson. And and one. Jackson also fouled him. And then, so he, he made the one, so it was a three-point lead. And then Middleton can't get that shot off um, on the pass. And it was, the, the Pacers' defense was excellent there. Um, there was nowhere else that they really could have passed it in. It had to go to Middleton. And he didn't have that magic shot in him. But Middleton ended up, where are the point numbers? 10 rebounds, 5 assists, and 42 points. This dude. That was insane. So if it wasn't for Embiid, I'm pretty sure that would be the highest. Um, I Maybe Siakam got... No, Siakam did not get higher um, any night. Siakam had a quiet night tonight. I think he had like 17 or 19 points. Um, I think I think that's okay for him. You know, after the last couple of games where he really put the Pacers on his back, he, we, we can let him rest this game, especially because the Pacers pulled out with the W. You can't really get on his back. And Miles Turner kind of made up for it, um, getting 29. He was hitting all kinds of threes. Um, Portis Jr. as well, 18 rebounds, 18 rebounds, um, zero assists, and 17 points. Guy doesn't know how to pass the rock, but that's okay. Um... He, um, like I said, 18 rebounds, um, especially in a game where they got out-rebounded on the offensive end um, by eight. Good for him. Good for him. That was a great game. I don't think the Bucks could have done anything better. Um, it looks really bad for them, though. They're still in Indiana now. Um, Indiana has home court advantage because they won um, in Milwaukee, and now it looks like Dame and Giannis are going to be out. So another thing this tells me, is if Giannis was in, how close this game and I think game one were, the the Bucks would be the Bucks would be up in the series. I don't know if it's three zero. I think it would probably be like two one. They would have won this game, um, but it's so unfortunate Giannis isn't in here, and everyone knows it. All the Bucks fans know it. It's and I'm sure the Pacers fan admitted admitted as well that they should not be doing this if um, Giannis was in there. It's such a good matchup be without Giannis. You know what I mean? Um, Siakam versus Lillard, and then Halliburton and um, and Middleton kind of cancel each other out, and then it goes to depth, and cool like that. But, you know, if Giannis is in there, no one's canceling out Giannis. Um, but, yeah, I think... Um, oh, what am I saying? Yeah, Toppin was getting all kinds of space under the basket in the first half. They really just were not... They did not care about Toppin. They even left him wide open for a three, and he hit. They did not care. They were like, yeah, hey, you're not going to do anything. I'm pretty sure you had, like, he had double digit points. I know that for a fact, but um, yeah, they did not want to cover him. But Milwaukee has a road to climb. I'm seeing Pacers going up three to one in this series, is particularly if Lillard doesn't play. If Lillard plays, I think I think the Bucks might tie it up. But um, just because of how close these games have been. But if he doesn't play, then um, I think it's I think it's all said and done for the Bucks to go down three one. Let's talk about the Mavericks and uh, the Clippers. Luka left early in the game. It looked kind of rough, but then he returned. Um, luckily for everybody, I in hockey, you leave the game, there's a 50-50 of you returning. I feel like basketball, there's like a 80% chance. Um, did you see all those lobs? Particularly to Lively? Dude, they, they could not stop lob. The, 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 the Clippers' entire practice should be about how to stop a, uh, a lob. It, it really should be. Um... James Harden had a good game. I think he had 21 points. He had a, he was really efficient from three early on, but then Luka would come in and just do the same crap as him um, and cancel it out. Um, Norman Powell also 21 points, a, a name that I wouldn't expect, especially on a star-studded team like the Clippers to have 21. Um, okay, why? So he did almost get a double-double, nine rebounds and nine points, but, like, he looks rough. There was one point where he was, he, he was doing... That he was causing unnecessary turnovers, unforced. Um, he's just not himself, and he's honestly a deficit to the team. I think they're um, reconfiguring whether they want him in game uh, four. And I, I think he's reconfiguring that himself. He's like, should I even go in? They're 0-2 with him, 1-0 with him. So I, I think I think at this point he's a liability, and I do think they should go without him in game four and just rest up. Obviously, they're gonna if, if they end up making a run, they're going to need him later. Um, they've already shown that they can beat the Mavericks considerably well without Kawhi. So it's 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 it, it's a little bit of a risk, but um, yeah. Um, Kyrie had twenty one points. Luca had twenty two. He was one assist away from a triple double. So that um, judging by how I take notes, means he probably had about ten rebounds. 
the Mavericks um, had 12 steals. The Clippers were just turning over the ball. There was one sequence where they kept turning it back and forth over. It's like no one wanted the damn ball. Um, it was it was crazy. Um, but, yeah, no, the uh, Clippers are going to have to also get better at ball control. Um, there, was, there was one point. So the Mavericks took out an early lead and kind of expanded on it. The Clippers were able to cut it to six. But then um, Kyrie. Kyrie only had like four points in the first half or some crap. He just, like, started going off hitting all kinds of threes and charging in and laying it in. And their lead ended up going to, like, 20 before the um, Clippers got, like, five more points. It was insane. It, like, like shit. Kyrie just shows up when he wants to. Like I said, he ended up with 21 points. So that means, like, that spree there was probably, like, about 17 and under, like, 10 minutes. So good job for um, damn Kyrie there. Um, let's see. Harden and Powell, great from three. Kyrie was insane. Um, Clippers were decent at make, trying to make a run late, but everything was answered by Kyrie. They were, they were scoring, um, late. Like, they weren't giving up. They weren't, um, bricking. They were actually making some shots late in the game, but, um, Kyrie had an answer for everything. And it, 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 it you can barely even blame it on the Clippers defense just because, um, they kept Kyrie the entire game. Um, let's talk about Russell Westbrook. So Westbrook and PJ Washington got ejected. What happened was um exclusive design means endless opportunity. Business is getting more complex. Mikhail Sergachev is playing. AI to get you better answers. Crack the code of good business. I so that that's going to be something I'm going to have to bring up tomorrow. Sergey is playing. Dude, I was sure if this guy's career was over. So, sorry, sorry. That's that's insane though. Um but um so Westbrook had a little, I think he fouled Luca, and Luca took offense to it. And then either that or vice versa, and Westbrook took it too far. They did call a tech, or I'm not sure if it was a tech on Luca or it was a normal on Luca. But then PJ Washington came in and just went Westbrook. Um, they both ended up getting ejected. Um, that was the first time in Westbrook's 119 playoff games that he'd ever been ejected. So not a repeat offender. What was I going to say? He got one point. I mean, I know how you get a free throw and you miss the other, but that's just so funny to me. I, I, I feel like I've never seen that before. But, um, yep, the um, Clippers go down 2-1 to one in the series. Um, They're going to... I, are they at home now? I always forget who has home court in that series because it was so close. But, um... Oh, yep, there's the uh, circuit. But, um... Yeah, they're, the Clippers are going to need to um, bounce back from this. If they if they get another showing from this uh, from Harden like this, then they should be fine. George was really quiet tonight. Um, I thought I had one note from him in here. I guess I um, I guess I missed it. But um, you know, nothing really from Paul George, and um, obviously Kawhi was holding back. So hopefully they can figure that out. And I don't want Kawhi in Game Four for Clippers' sake. And we'll um, we'll see what happens. Um, let's talk about the Suns. I'm not going to bring up the Coyotes again. I, I know I've discussed that probably the last two times. Um, Towns. Towns had the first eight points for the damn, um, for the, for the Timbies and ended up with 18. So, <laughs> I don't know where he went, but he got it started just like he needed to. He also had 13 rebounds. Gobert had 14 rebounds and 19 points just to kind of do a double middle finger, you know, when you're trying to count the M&Ms in the jar, and you just say one higher or one lower than um, the last person. That's what Gobert did. He put both of his points, or points and rebounds, just a one higher. Um, Anthony Edwards, 36. And here's the thing. Most of them were at the end when it, like, didn't matter, but he was he was sprinkling them in there whenever. Like, it wasn't like he was going out there, like, putting up everything, like, doing these insane shots. He just kind of had a casual-ass 36-point night, which is, <laughs> there you go, you know? Um, six scorers for the Timbies were in double digits, goes to show for their depth and lack thereof for the Suns, because I was wrong. There, I said it. You heard me say it. I was wrong. Beal had a good night. Booker had a good night. KD had a good night. 28 Beal, Booker 23, Durant 25. I said as long as they do that, like, like score around those areas, each of them, they should be fine. God, their depth sucks. It's so, that, that's... This is why, this is, they need to use this as, like, a blueprint for why super teams don't work. They really do. It's, um, it's crazy. The Suns got heavily out-rebounded. Obviously, the Timberwolves are a taller team, so we expected them to get out-rebounded. 
15 to 5 offensive. You allowed 15 offensive rebounds. Um, and then 35 to 25 defensive. Like shit. Like, like what if what if, what else do you gotta do? Beal, um, Booker, and and Eric Gordon. Whoa, we got another name in here. I think his name's Eric. Um, we're really good with the threes early on in the game. Um, as the game went on, obviously the tip, the Suns kind of got um, screwed up. Um, they did have a decent run to tie the game near the um, middle of the second, like around like the end of the second quarter, I would say actually. But um, obviously the um, Timbies took off. Conley and Alexander, what's his name, Walker, they have been just stellar. They have been such different makers in this um, in this series. I never even heard of Alexander Walker before this series, but now he's like a guy where it's like, damn, if like, for whatever reason, the Celtics sign him next year, I'd be really, really hyped. Like, he's a great player. Um, the depth from the Timberwolves is so evident, and it's just the lack of depth for the Suns that's going to maybe cause them to get swept. I mean... It's it's looking that way. It's nothing's really looking the Suns' way right now. Um, they were really not defending as well, especially on that run in the um, in the in the third that the um that the Timberwolves had. They were just letting everything go in. They showed no sign of effort of defensive play. They were just letting people walk up to the net. They were letting Conley shoot from wide open areas when he was already doing extremely well. Um, so I don't really. I can't really put a grasp on what the Suns were thinking there. They were playing horribly. And then they finally decided to um, defend near the end of the game, and that's when Edwards started just to do his thing. And there was there was no chance. I, I don't think there was a chance even if Edwards hadn't gone off near the end. But, like, they shouldn't have put themselves in that position in the first place. Um, so I think that's it for NBA games. It It, it, it is. Um, I'm not going to be – I just realized there's no way I'm going to be able to watch this overtime game and focus on this at the same time. So I'm going to stop this recording now. I might just upload this as its own thing because I just did all the NBAs and then I'll do NHLs at another time or I might combine them. We'll see. You'll find out. I'm experimenting because no one watches it anyways. Um, that sounds depressing. I don't care. Like, comment, subscribe um, if this is the end of the video and if not, I'll see you in a couple seconds. All right, so I'm going to start to go over this, but as soon as the commercial break comes, uh, I'm going to go back to watching the game so that... That's how we're doing this. Um, so we're first going to talk about the Capitals and the Rangers game. Um, obviously, not good for the Capitals. They're down 3-0 in the series. Um, Charlie Lindgren is the reason they made the playoffs. And he's going to be the reason that they get eliminated from the playoffs. Now, he has had some stellar saves. But the key thing here is inconsistency. He hasn't had the consistency to make all of the saves that he needs to. He hasn't been as good as he was at the end of the regular season that pushed them into the playoffs. Obviously, this is a team that probably shouldn't have made the playoffs, especially with the goal differential being like minus 35 or some crap. But Lindgren was a huge part that they made it, and he's just not not living up to what he is. Let's also talk about the Washington power play really quick. Um, allowed two two-on-ones on the same power play in like five, a 15-second span. The first one, they even allowed a goal on it. Um, from uh, what, Barclay Goodrow. So why the hell would they allow the second one? I, I just, I just don't get it. Um, but um, other than that, the I, I just don't think the Caps even pose so much as a little bit of a threat to the um, to the Rangers. I'm watching the Islanders and Canes game right now. Obviously, the Canes are up three to nothing in the series. Um, the Islanders have proven a threat at various points in the um, in the um, series. They've been up three zero in the second. They blew that lead, obviously, but I mean, at least you saw something from them. Um, the game is about to go underway. I'm going to pause real quick. So that game went to double overtime. Um, they did not have a lot of stoppages. I had no real opportunity to um, to record for you guys, but we're here now. Uh, let me just get to, up to where I was. Um, yeah, um, so let's talk um, Lafreniere. Um, five shots on goal. He really is having a great um, series. He's showing like he's never going to be in that rookie uh, awkward stage again. He's he's definitely a certified playoff player. You know what I'm trying to say. He doesn't got kind of like Byfield. He doesn't got the uh, the worries anymore. Um, Truba with seven blocks. That's good work from Jacob Truba. Highly controversial player showing his worth in terms of blocking shots here. Um, let's talk about the one yeah the one highlight that the Caps had all night as as far as I'm aware their goal. 
Um, that was a nasty passing between them. Who was it? It was Farivari to Oshi to Carlson. Carlson with a ripper. What a goal. What a sequence. What a great sequence right between the defense. And then they immediately answer. It was such a good feeling. You, you love to see it, especially for John Carlson, who has been playing his took us off all, um, all series. And um, he finally gets paid off on it in terms of goal scoring. Um, and then Chris Kreider answers on a Zibanejad deflection. Zibanejad is so scary again. I'm feeling like it's 2019. He's frightening me. It's it, it, it's crazy. Um, but yeah, no, um, Chris Kreider, obviously, um, great goal scorer. He also has gone on the board. So we're seeing some old-timer um, Ranger, like 2018, 19 goal scorers um, really start to go off. Um, we're still looking for some more consistency from Panarin. But... Um, yeah, Sesterkin has been awesome. Um, the Caps had a power play in straight from um, Ovechkin's office, as as they call it. Um, Sesterkin had a crazy save. Um, we'll talk about TVR in a little bit. I think y'all know where I'm going with that. Um, I have no idea how Sesterkin made the save on Pacioretty. That might be one of the biggest robberies of the postseason, up there with like Omar's glove and uh, okay, it's not it's not up there with Bobrovsky's backward save. That was that was ridiculous, but. Patchy already should have had that, and I don't put any of the blame on Patchy at all. Shesterkin was just there, and he had an answer. Um, and then Zabenajad again assists on a Trocek, I'm pretty sure, power play goal. Um, this is going to be a dangerous combo. Trocek, I feel, is like hitting his prime right now. This is definitely his best year as far as I can remember, and Zabenajad is playing like it's his best year. So Zibanejad and Trocek are going to be a force these playoffs, and it's going to take a lot to take them down. We'll see if the Canes can, because it's, it's not going to be the Caps, and it's not going to be the Islanders. So we'll see if the, we'll see if the Canes can. Um, Pacioretty had a good game. He had a really good pass to Wilson also in front of the net. That's right. And Wilson was stoned by Shesterkin again. Um, let's talk a little more about John, John Carlson, because we can't stop, right? We love John Carlson. 30-30 for ice time. He played 30 plus minutes. Hit a goal, made a goal, hit a post, um, three shots on goal. Why did he play 30 minutes? Because Matt Rempe should be fucking expelled from the league. I don't, dude. People are saying that was a clean hit. TVR's head's down. Sure, he should have had his head up. But there was intent to injure. That's the big thing. Rempe's hits are intent to injure, and it's freaking ridiculous. I don't understand. Why the, how he didn't get suspended. He did get ejected from the game, thank God. But, I mean, they're, they're down Trevor Van Riemsdyk. They're down Iorio. They're down Nick Jensen. They're down um, Sandine. I forget his first name right now because I'm just rattling shit. But Rasmus, Rasmus Sandine. So, we, I feel bad for the Caps. This isn't entirely their fault. I did take them. Oh, I'm sorry. I took the Rangers in five. Um, I think the Caps would have had at least one win had... Um, Sandine and Jensen started, and they didn't, so they had to go in with Iorio and TVR. TVR probably would have been in anyways, and both those guys got hurt. I think they bumped up McIlrath. I think that's who got it. So now they're going to have to bring up another defenseman um, because of Matt Rempe. Matt Rempe should be suspended. I don't care. He's a he's, uh, he's not a horrible player. He does his job, except he does it dirty. And that, there should be no space for that in the NHL, and that's all I have to say about that. Caps look cooked. And if Rempe so much as touches a puck, I'm, I mean, a cup, I might throw up. Um, all right, let's talk about the Canucks game. I forgot we have three to go through here. Oh, my God, we have so many. Um, so um, I apologize to Smith, and so does everyone. <laughs> um, legacy game for Casey DeSmith. He almost had a shutout. One, I'm sorry, three minutes left in the game. Evangelista, who had five shots on goal, I'm pretty sure, finally broke through on him. Um, it was a really nice goal. And it was only it was only a two one win as well, so they were they were really testing um, him at the end there. But this is an example of you don't have to be the better team to win. You really don't. The Canucks had twelve shots on net, I think, and the Preds had like thirty, uh, thirty to twelve. There you go. Um, y y the best team doesn't always win. It, it really. I'll tell you what. The the worst performance tonight. What? I, well, Soros wasn't spectacular but it was honestly the canucks um depth 
because almost every chance was Besser, Miller, or Pedersen at least involved, which, by the way, is terrific for them because those are the guys we needed to get going. Those guys were not showing up in the first two games. Pedersen was turning over the puck. This was discussed on the last time we talked about the Canucks. They showed up. Miller and Besser got those two goals. It, all peachy for those guys. Everyone else on the um, Canucks was offense was terrible the defense started terrible they were allowing all these shots right in on um to smith right in front of them um and then there was this one play i think i think we both know i'm going to talk about tyler myers here i'm gonna talk about ian cole puck was in the paint behind to smith i don't think it was trickling in the net i think it was trickling wide but still very good attentive um for, for attentive purposes of um myers to go there and clear it and then, of course, of course, Ian Cole. Like, three block shots at the end of the game. One of them was an empty net, and he dove in the way of that. Ian Cole, you get props. You are an old-timer. You're not specifically known for being a top defenseman. D definitely down in the depths in terms of depth. But you showed up today. You showed your veteran presence and your leadership. Ian Cole, good game, buddy. Um, let's talk about an injury. Spencer um, Stastny was hurt for the Predators pretty early on. Um, so they were rolling with five defense the whole game. Um, didn't really matter because the Canucks only got 12 shots on goal anyways. Um, I thought their power plays, however, looked really good. Um, just not a lot of shots on net. Um, the Miller assist on that Besser goal was so, so nice. Besser kind of had an easy goal there, but that was all because of the perf brilliant performance of JT Miller. Um, obviously, Besser scoring in any which way is excellent because we wanted the stars for the Canucks to wake up. We discussed this tonight. The stars for the um, Predators. I don't even want to say they played bad. The Predators played the better game. They just didn't get on the score sheet. Forsberg, I'm pretty sure, had four shots. Um, Evangelista, like I said, five shots. He's not exactly a star, but... And Yoshi, Yoshi was putting the puck on from everywhere this game. So the Predators didn't even play a bad game. It's just... The Smith was crazy, um, and um, Saros led in a couple... A couple that he, I don't want to say he shouldn't have, but like in terms of shots on net, sure, shouldn't have. Um, Sherwood had nine hits for the for the Preds. He definitely wasn't happy about anything that was going on in that game. Um, and I'm not sure if um, Jankowski got hurt. I wasn't able to watch the game. I watched the highlights, and the highlights don't tell the whole story, unfortunately. Um, and he only had eight minutes of ice time, so hopefully he didn't get hurt. He, I think he is an underrated depth piece for the Predators. Um, but, yeah, I don't think there's too much to say on this. The Predators shouldn't have to adjust anything in their game. If anything, the Canucks should. Their depth needs to wake up and do things. Like I said, I think that the Canucks have one of the best depths in the league. So I don't think this is very telling for what we should expect from the Canucks and their depth players. However, it's something that they simply can't allow again because they got incredibly lucky that... Um, to Smith came to play. Now, Winnipeg Jets time, guys. Winnipeg Jets time. First, I want to give my props to Zach Parisi. Another goal this game. Great job. It was a great goal up front. I'm pretty sure it was off of a rebound from, uh, uh, I don't know, um, Manson, Josh Manson, and then Parisi rebound. I love to see it for him. I don't need to explain why, because I already have. Um, Middlestat also had a great chance between the legs. Hellebuck managed to save that one. He couldn't save a beach ball, but he saved that great shot. So um, that didn't go on the highlight reel for Middlestat, unfortunately. It would have been really nice. Um, let's talk about a positive from tonight for the Winnipeg Jets. Toffoli scores. Monkey off his back. I'm sure. I know it's only been a couple games, but we expected him to show up. Um, it was an impossible angle, too. He was, like, on the red line, like, at the goal and just backhanded it. I'm sure it had to have gone up Gurgiev. I'm not sure how he would have scored if it didn't, unless the puck with damn boomerang. But, um, really good from Toffoli. Um, and then the power play. The power play, um, good pressure from Winnipeg, not letting the zone be cleared. And, um, a Josh Morrissey ripper. Um, and what was I going to say? The, um... Screen, screen from um, Velarde. How's that PLD trade looking? Um, great goal there. So the um, the Jets did have a 2-1 lead, and then Toffoli had a breakaway. And um, great attempt from Toffoli. I think it was a backhander um, after skating down and making it look like he was going to go um, on the forehand. But um, a greater save from Gorgiev. Gorgiev has been... He has, he has 
done what he needs to do um, the last couple games, and I didn't think I would be saying that. Um, now let's go to what happened. McKinnon scores. Um, it was a weak goal, in my opinion. I think McKinnon... It, it, was, a, it was a ripper, for sure. But I think he, if it's a five-hole, he was just trying to put it on net, I'm pretty sure. I just don't think Hellebuck expected him to shoot it, let alone shoot it right there. So, a little break for the guy, but considering that he let in six, not entirely. Um, and, and then Winnipeg allowed way too many chances for Colorado on the power play. It's, it's not going to be anything like what the Kings did, but which you're going to find out in a little bit. But, um... You can't allow Colorado on the power play. A team like that is going to make you pay for doing crap like that. And it was just... Stamkos from his office, baby. Oh, man. All right, all right, all right, all right. Um, I'll talk about that later. Great goal, Stamkos. Passed through a heavy traffic slot from Haig. Or, no, that's Sorelli. Oh, it was a tic-tac. Oh, great goal, great goal. Um... What was I going to say? Um, and then on the power play, the Nikushkin goal. You know I love Nikushkin. I love me some Valerie Nikushkin. That McKinnon pass, though, was gnarly. That goal, I we, we don't need to get on Hellebuck about that one. I mean, he ain't saving that. It was terrific through traffic. Kind, kind of like what I just saw up there, except cut out the middleman, um, which was Braden Point in that scenario. But... um. Great pass from McKinnon and uh, great um, attentiveness to know that that wasn't going to get intercepted because you know McKinnon wouldn't have passed it like that if um, he thought it was going to get intercepted. And then an, an, and another power play happens. Ross Colton scores. The average power play remains elite, but Winnipeg needs to stop taking these penalties. The, um, what was I going to say? The goal was fine, you know? Like, I, I should Hellebuck have saved it in, in, ter in the terms that he allowed six goals? Yes, he should have saved a couple of these, right? But, I mean, it was a good goal from Colton. Great def great little deflection, and you always look for those on a power play. Um, but Winnipeg just is beating themselves here. They, they really are. Um, and um, let's talk about Adam Lowry. At the end of the game, Lowry stepped up. He was like, my team needs a jump for next game. We're obviously going to lose. Fights, um, what's his name? Um fights Miles Wood. He fights Miles Wood. Um, he gets the best of Miles Wood. I didn't expect him to win that fight. Miles Wood's a very gritty player, um, but good job beating Miles Wood's ass, Lowry, because we we all love... I mean, I like Miles Wood as well, but, you know, I love Lowry, and I think that was a good uh, showmanship from their captain, from a team that has had captain problems over the last few years. Um, and then... Let's talk about overall game. McKinnon had eight shots on goal. Holy crap. He wanted one. He did get one, but that's it. Um, so so Hellebuck had his number. He also had Kale McCarr's number, who had five shots. And Lekkinen, I think Lekkinen did score. I don't know why I didn't write it here. He had, um, I think it was like a rushing in goal. Um, and he had five shots as well. Um, they outshot him 40 to 24. Con Kyle Connor and Nate Schmidt. I haven't brought up Connor's name since game one, huh? He has been horrible. They both had minus threes. Um, Morsi and Monahan, meanwhile, plus ones, plus ones. So that's very good for Morsi. Also, he had a goal. So Morsi had a actually um, a pretty good game. Uh, Monahan didn't really do much. Um, I guess it was just luck that he was out there. And I hate to say that because, you know, I love me some Sean Monahan. Um,. And let's talk about Brendan Dillon. He cut his hand bad. There was a big sprawl at, or um, scrum, I should say, at the end of the period. I'm sorry, at the end of the game. And Dillon, he, he sliced his hand bad. He's going to need a lot of stitches. We're going to, I'm curious if he's going to miss time from that. Hegel, Hegel, Hegel. Hegel, Hegel. Let's go, baby. Hegel wants this. Love it. Um... But I hope he doesn't miss any time. I think he's an underrated defenseman. Um, he was, I think he was solid when he was with the Caps. I know they didn't really do much when he was there. But um, I think that his time there was well spent. And um, obviously you don't wish anything like that on anyone. He looked to be like, okay. When you, when you hear like a skates cutting people these days, it's such a scary thing ever since, what's his name? Adam Johnson, the former Penguins player. Um, got his throat slit, unfortunately. Um Everyone um, has been nervous about that. So you hear a, a skate cut and you get nervous. Um, Brendan Dillon did look to be perfectly fine. Just unfortunate situation. Um, Going to probably have some trouble holding a stick um, if it hit any of his vitals. But 
that could just be BS because I am not a doctor. Um, last thing I'll say here is when do we consider Laurent Brossois? Winnipeg is making the exact same mistake that the Bruins made. They had, they had a goalie tandem that was really, really good. A number, a top three backup goalie in the league. Their starter won the Vezina, though, so they just keep running the starter. That's exactly what the Bruins did. And and, and they had they had 65 wins, and they lost in the first round by doing that. So I'm not saying always just keep rotating your goalies in and out. It definitely does depend on the situation. But this is a situation where you need to be shuffling them out. He allowed, what, 6, 5, and then 6? No, I think 6, 5, and 5. That's unacceptable from any goalie. You're, and you're talking about a Vezina. You have Laurent Brassois. I put him in game four. I put him in for the rest of the series. Hellebuck doesn't see ice for the rest of the series if I'm the coach. Maybe that's why I'm not the coach. However, I think it is a mistake to start him in the next game. All right, so the overtime is over. Islanders are all alive. They managed to fend off the Canes in second overtime. And all this just to go down 57 to nothing in the first period. Next game, no, I'm just kidding. But... Yeah, no, I don't see him getting out of Raleigh alive. Um, but we'll cover that more tomorrow. Um, let's talk about the Kings and the Oilers. I just ate. Um, so Kings stole one on the road from the Oilers, and the Oilers stole one right back from them. Um, yeah, there's a lot to blame for this loss on the um, on the Kings. Of course, I'll blow out again, but... Uh, boring series this has been other than game two um let's jump right into it i cannot blame talbot for that first goal the awareness from zach hyman in the crease there was unreal he shot the puck it was kind of lost he knew exactly where it was going though it was like one of those things you know where they put the puck under the uh, buckets they shuffle them it's like which one it is in what which one is it in um and uh he he did that perfectly down to a t so hyman got that in it was, it was great. Um, one of the more underrated plays I saw. It was crazy. And, like, like you know, it's going to go under the radar because it's just stick handling. But the puck was about to leave the zone. And dry saddles like, deking in and out of, like, three kings to keep it in. I mean, that's incredible by dry saddle. But kings, you got to get it out in that scenario. That scenario is the craziest keep in I've seen in quite a while. Other than there was one time, like, oh, was it? Oh, it was, um... Gosta Spares jump keep in um, to keep the Red Wings alive before they knew that the Capitals had won. Um, it was like up there with that. It was it was insane. Um, it was a great rush and um, great passing for the Dreisaitl goal. Um, we haven't talked at all about Evander Kane this series. I figured we would. Maybe not in the goal scoring realm. I mean, he doesn't score goal. I mean, he does score goals occasionally, um, but he always is a physical presence. Um, I figured at this point we'd like you know see some of that we haven't really but we saw some hockey iq from the man he went behind the net looked like he was going for a wraparound but instead he passed it right behind him to dry sidle and talbot moved out of the way and it's just mind games it's mind games with talbot both of those goals he didn't know where the puck was um and one of them wasn't his fault or one of them wasn't because of the oilers the oilers just had a firmer grasp on where it was and, and the other one the, the other one they tricked him. They tricked the some bitch. So g great assist there from Evander King. An excellent play that you're probably not going to get a lot of credit for from the fans. But I'm sure, I'm sure the Edmonton locker room was like that was that was clever as hell. Um, let's talk McDavid. Let's talk McDavid. So he finally got a goal. No, no one was missing it because I mean he was everywhere on the assist sheet. Um. Crazy, like, like the back and forth, back and forth. Uh, the the puck handling is unreal for McDavid. He tries to puck it, tuck it in two ways. Finally, the third way, he's able to tuck it in. Um, gets on the score sheet. This this whole series is just showing off his playmaking, his skating, and his um puck. Um, what was I saying puck handling skill? Everyone knows him for like you know being a fast skater and being able to score some goals. He's showing off everything. He's saying, I am that guy in every category here offensively, and there's nothing you can do to prove otherwise. And he is be he is correct about that. Um let's talk a couple positives from uh the Kings really quick. Lefarrier knocked down Darren A. 
Wow, what what a hit, right? I mean, Darren is such a giant Lefairy. I don't think of Lefairy here like that. Um, rookie from this year, and um, I I, I always figured him to be a smaller guy. He was um decent at goal scoring in the beginning of the year, but then kind of fell off cliff. Um, he had a great hit on uh Darren, I believe, behind the King's net, maybe the Oilers net, uh, behind a net, if I recall. And uh, what what I hate, he leveled him, and Darnay is usually not a guy who's used to getting leveled, let alone by uh, 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 someone like Lafren, Laferriere, I I believe. Um, and um, let's talk Quinton Byfield. Quinton Byfield again showing his poise. He had a great assist on uh, Doughty's goal. He gave Doughty a wide open net to work with because I guarantee you Skinner did not think that he could complete that pass. There were a lot of sticks in that passing lane, but e e even a couple, of, maybe like one king stick as well. But he he saw a lane and he took it. I think that's very impressive work from Byfield. Um, I think he could be dangerous as as the playoffs go on. Were he were they to advance, I don't think they will. But I think he's a guy that people are going to underestimate and they're going to have to look out for. I underestimated Byfield for a long time, but now I see the confidence in his game. And I think that's all he really needed. The skill was always there. Um, Talbot's, or I'm sorry. Um, so Kane did score. It was off his knee, so barely. But because uh, Cody CC shot it from the point and then it deflected in off his knee. It was such a small deflection. I feel like Talbot really should have had that. I know like an inch makes a difference, but... That, that was a rough one for Talbot, in my opinion. Um, I think at this point, at this point, what are we up? Are we, we're we're four to one, right? Um, so yeah, no Talbot. I, I don't know, man. Um, are we putting in Riddick, or are we are we calling it quits on Talbot? Because he he also like Hellebuck, even though they won a game, allowed a lot of goals in that one game, and then both of the losses were blowout losses. So are I, I, why why throw the why throw the bag at Hellebuck if we're not also going to throw it at Talbot in this situation? Are we getting rid of Talbot? I, I'm borderlining on that. Je the, the only reason I'm borderlining is because they don't have a backup as good as Brassois. They have Riddick, who's, who, is, who is a decent backup. It is probably, I'd say, like top 10-ish. Um, but, yeah, the um, the goaltending was not very good from um, from L.A. Um, the, the goaltending for Edmonton so far has been fine. I definitely said that aging poorly, but... Um, yeah, and, and then um, uh, let's cover the last goal. Um, actually, wait, no, I am so sorry. There's two more goals to go over, and both of them, I swear to God, are on separate two-man advantages. How do you? And, and you and you wonder what's crazy as well. Guess who is taking these penalties? Kempe and Kopitar have four penalty minutes each, so that means two minors or maybe a double minor. Um, England, okay, um, has seven. Drew Doughty has 12, and Dubois has 14. Doughty, you're supposed to be their leader. Dubois, you're the biggest overrated piece of shit of all time. No one likes you. Doughty, you're supposed to be a leader. And you're 12 penalty minutes? I, I must have been fighting, maybe an ejection. I don't know. All I know is these guys couldn't stay out of the box. They allowed way too many power plays for the Oilers, which is so dangerous. We all know how dangerous it is. Um... And especially for a five on three, how could they do that? Don't understand it, but it happened, and the Kings got to live with it and just be better, be more disciplined. Um, the um, th this whole series, the the Kings are over ten on the power play, and the Oilers are seven for fourteen, fifty percent on the power play, and that and they're allowing chances like that. I I just don't get it. I don't get it. And, and then uh, the last thing I have written here is Hyman had five hits, so he's doing stuff from everywhere oh i didn't even go over the goals hyman did tip it in on a um two-man advantage hyman tip in two-man advantage i could have put money on that and got it um and so that was his second of the night does he have five or six in the playoffs now i think he i think that might be six is that six in three games for hyman hold on yes it is the the next highest is three Dude, I, I the Hyman haters can go do whatever with their lives. They're not winning the battle. Hyman is all of a sudden elite. It's crazy. We never thought we'd see the day, but it's it's happening, folks. It's happening. And then um, <clears throat> Drysaddle also got another goal. I think that was his second of the day. Um, 
on another five on three. It looked like a Stamkos goal, um, except in the right face-off circle instead of the left. I also wrote, Kings, the fuck are you doing? Because why are you allowing all these chances? So, Kings are down bad. I thought they were going to get swept. They ended up winning a game. Um, I don't think they win a nether, especially if they're taking stupid ass penalties like this. So, yeah, that is it for this episode, I feel. I got lots of more sports to watch tonight. Um, so, yeah, I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Like, comment, and subscribe.